Hi there. Welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, we discuss linear probing. Let's begin. Linear probing is a method of collision resolution by sequentially searching a hash table beginning at the location returned by the hash function. A collision occurs when a hash function returns a hash index for multiple keys. Linear probing is used with hash tables where all keys are stored in a single array. Each location within the hash table, in addition to storing its key, gets marked. We could name these marks used, deleted, or empty. If a location is marked used, the locations are currently storing a valid value, a valid key. Deleted locations contain a formerly valid value. Empty locations have never contained a valid value. Okay, so let's take a look at this in action. Here we have a hash table that's implemented using a single array. We've initialized the hash table by marking each one of the elements with an E. E indicates that each location within the hash table is empty, which is to say it has never been assigned a valid value. Okay, so let us assume that we are going to add a value 10, right? This is the key. So what happens is, is that the hash function would have returned as a hash index, index one. So that means that 10 would be assigned to the second element within the array. Once that's been done, then we have to change the mark on that element from empty to used. So let us now assume that we wanted to assign the value 20 to our hash table. If we examine element one, we notice that it is marked as used. Therefore, 20 cannot be assigned to that element. So what we need to do is we need to, according to linear probing, check the very next element. Okay, for the very next element, we notice that it is marked as E or empty. This allows us to go ahead and assign 20 to this element and change its mark from empty to used. Next, let us assume that we want to add the value 30 to our hash table. Okay, and let us further assume that 30, when given to the hash function, returns a hash index of 1. Right? We have another collision. So according to linear probing, what we'll do is we'll look at the element, the first element that the hash function gave us, which was element 1. We notice that it's used, so we search or we examine the next element over. We notice also that this element is also marked as used. So then we will look at the next element following that one. Okay, and so that element, not used, it's marked as empty. So we can now assign 30 to this element. Once we've done that, we mark that element as being used. Now let us say that we wanted to remove a value from our hash table. So let us say that we wanted to remove 20. Okay. After applying the hash function once again, passing 20 as its argument, that would return 1 for the hash index. Right. So what we would do is we would examine element 1 and we would look to see if that element was used. And if it was, we would then look to see what the value is being stored there. So element one being used, but we're looking to remove 20, not 10. So then linear probing would say, all right, well, let's look at the next element over. Okay, so at element two, we would notice that the element is marked as used. And then since it is used, we'd, we'd then check to see what value is at element two. We'd notice that it contains 20. So that means we found the value that we want to remove. And so to remove it, we simply mark that location as being deleted. Right? So we change the use to a D. Not to empty, they have two different meanings. Okay? Now let us assume that we wanted to remove 10. Well, our hash function would return a hash index of one. 
So we would look in the very first element, right? Excuse me, we would look in element one, and we would notice that that element is marked as used, and then we would check to see if that element contains the value we want to remove. It does. So to remove it from our hash table, we would mark that element as being deleted. Okay, so let us now assume that we want to remove the value 30 from the hash table. We would first pass 30 to the hash function, which would return 1 for the hash index. So then we would check uh, element 1. We would see that it is not used, right? But that doesn't mean, because element 1 is marked as D for deleted, doesn't mean that 30 isn't in the hash table. It certainly is. It's stored in element 3, and that element 3 is marked as used. Right? So value is definitely still in the hash table. So what we're going to do is, is so long as the element we're currently examining is not used and not empty and not the value we're looking for, then we'll move to the next element. Right? So element 1, not used, not empty, and is not 30. So according to linear probing, check the next element, which is element two, okay? So is element two used or empty? No, right? And it's also not 30. Therefore, we'll look at the next element, element three. Okay, now element three is used, which means that this is a valid value in our hash table, okay? So then we would ask the question, okay, well, is this the value that we want to remove? Okay, well, 30 matches the value we want to remove. We want to get rid of 30. So to remove it from the table, we once again mark it as deleted. Okay. So the only time a value is considered valid or being part of our hash table is when the element that is storing that value is marked to you. Right. Either empty or deleted means that that element does not contain a valid value. Now we need two different designations to support this behavior that we just saw, right? So that way our linear probing can continue and doesn't immediately end when it uh, sees a element that is marked as deleted, right? So let me give you one last example here. So let us assume that we wanted to remove 40 from our hash table. What would happen? Okay, so let's say that we pass 40 to our hash function and the hash index that's returned is one. Okay, so what would happen is, is that we would check element one to see if it was uh, used or empty, right? And so long as it isn't either of those two things, we then check to see what the value is. Well, 10 is not 40, so we would move to the next element. Okay, so element two, not used, not empty. So then we check the contents of that element, 40 is not 20, so we move to the next element not used, not empty, and 30 isn't 40, so then we go to the next element. Okay, element four, not used, but it is empty, right? So that's where our search ends. There is no 40 that is going to be in this hash table, okay? All right, now there are some problems with this. The first problem is that it leads to this idea of clustering, right? And clustering is the tendency of elements to become unevenly distributed in the hash table with many elements clustering around a single hash location. In the previous example, you saw that when we added all those values to the hash table, if the hash function gave us the same hash index, we have all of those values right next to each other. This is bad and performance degrades. The more clusters that you have, the slower the operations get. That's because what we're essentially doing is a linear search to find a insertion place or a value to remove. So alternatives to linear probing include rehashing, quadratic probing, and random probing, each of which is discussed in the text. Okay, so let's summarize. We introduced the concept of linear probing. We saw an example of linear probing in action. And we discussed multiple problems with linear probing and mentioned their solution. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, uh, please consider giving it a thumbs up, maybe hitting that subscribe button, 
As usual, if you're a student of mine, please feel free to stop by my office hours or shoot me an email if you have any other questions. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.